Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a nice weekend. A uh, couple things planned today. Got a few things to do down here in the shop. You know, I tell you, when I'm down in the shop, it's the only time my head is clear. Imagine that. You know, it's, uh, I can't go up, so you can't watch the news. You just, you know, you, you go nuts. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be down here again. And, uh, first thing I wanted to do is I want to talk about the last couple videos I did. Um, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that, uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I make a lot of mistakes as far as when I call tool, certain tools, certain tool, I, I'll call a hammer wrench or I'll call this a different tool, you know, like uh, last week we did that Tremo wrench and I uh, called it a pipe wrench. Uh, and the reason I did that is because back then when I was a kid growing up, um, we didn't have much use for pipe wrenches around here with the plumbing, you know, but uh, my dad was a big pipe wrench fan. He would buy him whenever he, he would see him. And... Um, when I said, uh, you know, without the teeth, it's uh, it's considered like a monkey wrench or a nut wrench. But uh, we used to call anything with those rings, you know, that ring around the uh, the base that of that uh, wrench. We used to call that a uh, anything that had that we called a pipe wrench. And a lot of times, growing up here in New York, you know, a pipe wrench was used more as a as a deterrent than it would be a tool. I'll show you what I mean. Hey, how would you like me to wrap this pipe wrench around your head? What pipe wrench? This pipe wrench here. That is not a pipe wrench. With all due respect, a pipe wrench needs teeth to grip the pipe. That, that wrench has no teeth. How's this, better? Now that's a pipe wrench. Good. So you can see why I, I called that uh, particular tool a pipe wrench because, uh, you know, we had we called them all pipe wrenches. But let me tell you, uh, when it came to hatchets and axes, uh, a lot of people, depending on where you are in the country, and you know something, it, it doesn't matter what you call the tool, you know, it really doesn't. And uh, it changes through time. Sometimes years ago, it would be called one thing and later on it'd be called another. But um, an axe and a hatchet were always two different things in my neck of the woods. And um, a hatchet was always something that had the uh, hammer in the back. And let me show you, because I used to collect... Now, people them. can argue what something is called, but let me tell you a couple of terminologies. When I was growing up, how we figured it out. Um, when you saw something like this, this was considered an axe, you know, because it, it was a typical axe. You know, it had a little area back here, but it really wasn't a hammer or any kind of striking. It was, this was considered a traditional axe. However, uh, a straight handle was indicative... I love using that word, indicative. <laughs> it was indicative of a hatchet, okay? So when you saw a straight handle, it was a hatchet. When it had a curved handle like this, it was usually on an axe. Now this you would say, okay, then it's an axe. But however, this has a definite area on the back of this old plum that was made for hammering. You could see it's a little longer than most. Normally they would cut off there. So uh, here's where it gets into the little tricky area. Okay, now we get into what I traditionally call a hatchet. A hatchet is always something that had an axe on one side and some kind of striking hammer on the other side. Any kind of striking hammer and of course a straight handle. And look at this handle with the little uh, the little uh, countersunk holes or whatever. So I, it's probably an aftermarket handle. That's pretty cool. And this one's an old Craftsman. You can see here. And uh, now these are interesting because years ago they were very common. And I'm talking when I say years ago, over 50, 60 years ago. Uh, and it was every house had a hatch. You could obviously see this handle was ill-fitted and not the correct handle for this. And uh, you could see this an ideal, an old ideal. I usually don't buy damaged tools but this is a pretty rare one that's why i picked it up um here is a another traditional hatchet this one here had a waffle face on it which was all uh banged down and uh can't make out what make this one is but they were some really nice ones i have a beautiful collection of them they're packed away i have some german ones that were really nice and and just beautifully shaped here's a classic plum now, plum made great stuff, you know, and the nice thing about plum, you could see, is the handle is still tight. Uh, it looks like the original handle that was on here. The dual wedges, look at the, uh, what is this, an octagon uh, top around here. It's just a, you know, this is a sweet hatchet. And this is what we'd always call a hatchet. And let me show you. Okay, what. here we have our dictionary of American hand tools. Again, 
this doesn't matter. It's, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter, you know, as long as we know what we're talking about. But here was the typical, here's where the axis start in here. And you could see the different types of, and what's so great about this book here is it really covers a tremendous amount of different uh, styles and different heads and things like that. And a coal miner's axe, never heard of anything like that. Um, you can see all the different patterns of axes there were. And you can see they all have one thing in common. They all pretty much look similar as far as the back goes now here's a pole axe but that looks almost like a hatchet but again these i guess you never see a hatchet that's over 24 inches you know those i guess are all cold axes but see the different heads they have pretty interesting right you know depending on where you're from and what you used it for um so let me show you the difference between that and a hatchet let's go over to h okay now here we're in the hat hatchets are starting Notice the hatchets, they all have the hammer in the back here, see? Now these are all considered hatchets, but some, you know, you might call them, a, here's a camp hatchet, but we would call them axes, but, you know, like this one here especially, this one here we would, I would call more or less an, an axe, but, you know, because it don't have the straight handle, but, uh, you know, again, it all depends on where you're from. So I, I put no, you know, credence into what people call whatever, but we do think of, whenever you do think of a hatchet or you go on eBay and you're searching for something with uh, with a hammer on the back, um, it's, it's a good idea to punch in hatchet on top of... Uh, you know your other searches but here was i was talking about remember saying some of the german designs look some of them were really beautiful you know some of them really uh they did a nice job and i have some really nice examples but they're upstairs so that's the difference that i found between an axe and now hatchet. your shingling hatchet is a totally different animal and shouldn't be confused with your regular hatchet like this one here but uh, this one here, you know, it's funny. I go to Jacktown. There's a guy in Jacktown, and he marks all his prices with this kind of fluorescent pink tape. Really nice guy. I go to him all the time. I always wind up buying something from him. His prices are outstanding. But uh, this plum that I picked up from him, I figured today we'll just... I want to show you what I do normally. This is a, a, a tool like this I don't restore because it's, it's already nice. You know what I mean? I kind of go for the tools that are wrecked, you know? So um, I want to show you how I clean up something like this to just put, you know, to use it because this is something that I would use. I only kind of restore tools that are over the, you know, kind of shot or whatever. And, and this, the handle is so nice. I would not want to take the handle out of here because it's a stock handle. It's really seated nice. It's tight and it's, uh, it's got the original finish on here so there's nothing wrong with it but I would just like to clean up the head and let me show you how I do it and you can see here it's got you know where somebody tried to sharpen the edge you can see here this is what happens it's a user it's a tool meant to be used the funny thing about hatchets is if you ever used one is they feel they look so great like you said man I want to get one I want to use as soon as you start hammering with this thing and you have this blade coming up by your head as you're hammering it's a game changer you're like I, I tell you the truth I never felt safe using these and I, I never liked them for that reason, because this this sharp edge doing this coming close to your head, I just, you know, something I guess you got to grow up around. And I just, I'd rather have a, either a hammer or an axe. I wasn't much, but I did collect them because I just think they're interesting. Let me show you how I clean this up. Okay, quick public service announcement. Uh, just had a little bit of an injury happen. Uh, I'm trying to be careful because you don't want to go to the hospital now. If you need to go to the hospital, you're in screw and bad way. But what happened was, I was doing my little uh, hatchet there, and and uh, it was slip. It slipped out of the, and I went to grab it, and I grabbed the disc. I grabbed the disc. And, uh, you know, I got a little bit in. I'm going to show you. So if you're a little squeamish, you might want to turn away. Let me just show you. Okay, what here it is. So the grinder was, uh, the thing was falling. I went to grab it and I grabbed the disc, the spinning disc instead. And you could see I, uh, <laughs> I removed my pinky fingerprint, I think. And, uh, so it's kind of a road rash kind of accident. And the only reason I'm showing this is I'm just, uh, I want you to know one now, thing. Now, the funny thing is, uh, you know, injuries are going to happen in a shot anytime. So you just got to, you know, take it easy, be careful. 
You try your best, but uh, I had a friend of mine, we used to fly radio control airplanes when I was younger. And uh, this was back before all the computerized stuff, you know. And uh, we used to say, if you're not crashing, you're not flying, which means, you know, guys talk about, well, I've never been injured in the shop and they spend an, a total of an hour a week in the shop at tops, you know. So we're all gonna get injured in the shop. You just try and keep it to a minimum. You wrap it up, man up, and get back to it. Let's okay, there we are, good as new. And uh, one thing I just wanted to tell you really important about injuries, I don't care what it is, when it happens, you stop what you're doing and you go uh, it's disinfect it right away. Wash it up with a lot of soap and water. That hurts more than the actual injury itself. But scrub it out real good and then wrap it up and protect it and then get back to work. But don't work with an injury because that's how you get infected. That's important. Learn that the hard way. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this nice little hatchet looked like before we started. Okay, here we go. Nice little cleanup, you know. And you can see we just uh, we didn't go crazy. We just did a, a just a nice cleanup on here, and you know did the face to get all the chips. But here's something that's interesting. If you look here, if you notice, there's one facet of this uh, octagon I did not. And it says this was a U.S. You see that? You could just see the barely make out the stamping. This was, I guess, military issued. That's why I couldn't go deep on here because I want to keep that U.S. But the rest of them I did. I got them nice. And, you know, it's a nice finish on here. It's like a satiny finish. And you know what this, this needs, right? I mean, I don't want to say, and I, you know, cleaned it up. This is the way I like to keep my tools if I, you know, I could still use this without freaking out because it's, uh, you know, I spent hours on it. Uh... What I would really like to do is from here down red. <laughs> That's my pride. From here down red. I mean, that would just look awesome. And yep, I had to do it. I mean, come on. That's what I call. Come on, isn't that sweet? <laughs> okay, uh, one quick thing to talk about. I want to talk about this little notch here. Uh, really important. Let's get talking about that. Now, to fully appreciate why they put these little nail pullers into uh, hatchets and axes years ago, you have to remember years ago camping was totally different than it is today uh, today we practice no trace camping where you leave a campsite as good or better than you found it which means you know we don't put holes in trees try not to cut down standing trees things like that years ago it was totally different when you went camping or all pets are off you you devastated that campsite and uh, you cut trees down to make a uh, whatever tripods whatever but you know we do things different today but uh, every camper years ago used to have nails, you know, and you would carry nails. And the reason is, you know, you would, if you wanted to hang up a, uh, a, t a tent line or something like that, you would put a, a nail into a tree. You would just hammer a nail into a, a tree. And then once you hammered the nail into the tree, what you would do is you would have your, your tent line you could put up or you could hang a mirror, you know, tons of things. You know, we always carry nails. Today we don't do that. But uh, over here with this uh, nail puller, you could see that you could, uh, it, it was a decent nail puller. It did a good job on getting the nails up. The problem is that uh, if the nail was flush, then this was useless. You couldn't get a flush nail because you couldn't get under it. But again, it was made for trees and things like that. When you would tap a nail in into a tree or something like that. So they do come in handy and they really came in handy years ago. Uh, so in closing, I just want to say you got about three weeks for the uh, birdhouse challenge starting today. So you got plenty of time, but don't let it sit. You know, a lot of times when we have a lot of time for these challenges, you put it off to the end and... Uh, Nothing better than getting in the shop now, getting all this out of your mind. I'm telling you, have a good time. Get down there. Get started on that. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.